What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh coming at you to be able to answer a very valued viewer's question today from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Lots of love from here in the D.C. metro area. Hoping everybody down there is doing great. Last time I was in San Juan, I think was in 2014. I had a delightful experience. Some of the best people I've met in my life. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you as always. Please, everybody, before I read the question, what I've got here on my phone and answer it for you, please do me a big favor and smash that like button, a little thumbs up button doesn't cost you anything helps the channel grow really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed already too please make sure that you subscribe because this is a lot of fun for me to be able to do for you and hopefully it's certainly something that you enjoy all the videos on this channel so let's go ahead and get into it here's the question it comes from bg fan 14 thank you so much also make sure guys that uh, if you do ask a question please do make sure that you put your name in it your first name you can even make up your first name i don't really mind but this way i can call you something okay here we go so hi dr singh saying hi from san juan puerto rico how useful is coding and programming skills in psychological research how prevalent is it within the field compared to other disciplines this is a great question i can tell you that it is really not very common to be able to uh, essentially identify individuals in the field who do not already have some kind of a, let's say computer science or programming background to be able to find those sorts of skill sets these are great skill sets to have now, my specific recommendation is that you really give a lot of thought to what are these specific software packages, especially open source software packages, where you could make best use of your programming skills what are essentially the packages that are utilized in your specific field of research? And when I say specific field, obviously I know that we're talking about psych, but I want you to drill down a little bit. So for example, let's say that you're interested in a subfield of psych that specifically is something like cognitive neuroscience, for example, where we're dealing with things like, uh, you know, positron emission tomography or diffuser tensor imaging or functional magnetic resonance imaging or any of these sorts of things, right? So for example, I remember when I was back at this place called FIMRIB, which is in Oxford, and I remember going and taking classes there uh, and everything. Oh, my. It was crazy, right? Uh, because it wasn't a formal class at Oxford for my doctorate. You know, it was a research doctorate. So you don't take classes, which sounds insane. But I wanted to take a class that was specifically having to do with how to be able to conduct fMRI research. And, of course, at the time, the big platform for that, the big statistical package was MATLAB. Oh my God, MATLAB, if I had known anything about programming and coding, that would have helped me out so much. Now, at the end of the day, what I ended up in is basically utilizing a statistical package called Stata. Stata is definitely something, especially the older versions, which did not have any kind of graphical user interface. The UX UI, which if you're in the know on, you know, tech and these sorts of things, UX UI is basically user experience, user interface, which is kind of the new version of saying GUI, which used to be graphical user interface, right? So the thing is, is that Stata is something that's kind of like right in the middle and before kind of the current version of the UI, right, that they've got, it, the thing literally looked like Microsoft DOS or something, right? The thing was so old. And so because of that, it really was kind of programming and coding. And it was definitely something where people were able to make kind of these open source uh, additions, add-on packages. And that was awesome. I can't tell you, as somebody who was really into meta-analysis, how much that helped me out. You can make a big difference in the field, mate, just by kind of developing your own add-ons to existing platforms. You can make a name for yourself just doing that. Like I said, it's not a skill a lot of people have. Now, it's also a big benefit, the fact that you already know how to do that in terms of new, uh, new intersections of fields. For example, my field is violence risk assessment. We're trying to predict the likelihood of future offending. In something like that, there is an entirely new subsector of the field, subsection of the field, and it all has to do with mach machine learning algorithms, right? So it's, you know, Bayesian stuff, neural network models, etc. But, you know, the end, you know, utilizing cloud computing and this kind of stuff, right? But machine learning algorithms. And obviously, if you want to know things about machine learning, you are going to get deep, deep, deep into the comm sci literature and so forth. So I think it's something that's great to know because it can also can promote in your future cross-disciplinary collaboration, which you guys know I'm all about. All about cross-disciplinary collaboration. I think it's great. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, but that is only one example. You think about another uh, package like R. R is very famously open source, for example. You can take a look at the website for Centers for Open Science or Center for Open Science to be able to take a look at what kind of open, uh, open software, as they call it, is out there that you could take a look at the source code for, see if you can make any modifications. I think you could have a lot of fun tinkering around. That's my recommendation. Great skill set. That is a rare skill set to have. 
And so I really do recommend when you're doing your graduate school application interviews, push, push, push that and talk about how you can essentially utilize and leverage those skills into pushing your specific subfield forward. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you for the terrific question. If you have a high sensitivity question, that would be interest to the several of uh, that would be of interest to the several thousand subscribers that we've got on the channel. Please do put it down in the comments below. Even if you just want to comment and say you love the video or you think that I look terrible in this turtleneck and you want to let me know. Although, let's be honest, I look great. Please do make sure to put it below. I really appreciate you guys. Lots of love. Peace.